So companies don't have to adopt the system that their uh, competitors or their partners use, but instead can be comfortable using their own systems and workflows, but yet contribute data that can be shared amongst all these different supply chain systems. Welcome to Hedera Hashgraphs, Gossip About Gossip. I'm Daniel Francis. I'm Ken Anderson. And I'm Paul Madsen. If you are a developer, an entrepreneur, crypto enthusiast, or just trying to learn more about how distributed ledger technology and Hedera Hashgraph will impact your industry, then you'll love the episodes that we have coming up. Bookmark us, add us to your podcast app, and stay tuned. Hey there, and welcome to Hedera Hashgraph, Gossip About Gossip. I'm Paul Madsen. So whenever I think about a a use case and whether it's appropriate to a DLT, Hedera or otherwise, sort of use two criteria. You know, one, are there a set of parties that want to be able to write some business data to a database? And are those parties adversarial or at least competitive? And if your use case answers yes to both those things, then maybe it's a good fit for a a DLT. There's even a meme for these decision trees to help you make that decision. There's too many of those decision trees. Supply chain seems tailor-made for DLTs because it, to my mind at least, really fits those two fundamental criteria. Multiple parties who have different, potentially different opinions as to what is happening and when it's happening with respect to delivery of some product along the chain. Which is why I'm happy to welcome today to the podcast, Kent Makashima from Armada Chain, ADAPT Building, a supply chain solution on top of uh, Hedera. Welcome, Kent. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you, Paul. You're in our San Francisco office, I believe? Uh, yes, I am. It's a beautiful office. So, so, Kent, supply chain, are we putting tomatoes on the blockchain? Is that the premise? Not necessarily putting tomatoes on the blockchain like IBM. Our model chain is more focused about providing a interoperability layer between different supply chain systems. So companies don't have to adopt the system that their uh, competitors or their partners use, but instead can be comfortable using their own systems and workflows, but yet contribute data that can be shared amongst all these different supply chain systems. Okay. So companies presumably have their own supply chain solutions, but Arguably, they don't work well together and Armada's hub, if you will. Yeah, we're basically that hub that creates this like collaboration network amongst companies. Okay. So, you know, hubs sound pretty centralized. How do you inject decentralization back into the solution? Right. So as a hub itself, we offer um, kind of what I would like to call like the on-ramp onto DLT. You know, as you said, you know, hubs overarching like supply chain solutions are very centralized. And a lot of companies I talk to in the supply chain space are afraid of adopting, you know, their competitor software or all being on the same platform that somebody else offers, but instead, you know, want to submit their data so that other people can use it as well. And what we do is that we supply kind of the on-ramp onto Hedera Hashgraph, where companies can submit their information onto their ledger in an encrypted manner where their respective partners can receive that data from real time from one of their other partners supply chain systems okay cool that sounds like there's some sort of encryption layer by which you ensure that only appropriate partners can can see the data yes i mean that's the precaution that we have to take when posting um, you know business data to the public ledger opposed to using a permission blockchain or such. Okay, I'm going to come back to that topic because I, I'm sure you're aware of the Hedera consensus service. So it's a mm-hmm. it's a different way to arguably achieve the same, but we'll come back to that. So Armada came through Helix. What was that like? Helix was great. I think it was an amazing uh, strategic opportunity to come to Hong Kong, not only to take advantage of the local business ecosystem in Hong Kong, which arguably was great for us being in the supply chain sector, being a maritime hub, but provided us, you know, great close connections with the Hedera Hashgraph team, not only with the executive team, but also with all their technical development staff, which definitely helped us get a leg up on Hedera Hashgraph development. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I was fascinated. I loved watching the the progression of the accelerator and the, and the dApps within it. So yeah, I look forward to, to the next cohort. Why Hedera, Kent? What is it on Hedera that gives you something that you couldn't find elsewhere? Right. So originally, Armada, when the idea was first conceived, we were built on the EOS blockchain. And this is when EOS first mainnetted back in uh, June 2018. And, you know, it was really cool just to uh, 
be on the forefront of the development. Development was fast. The smart contracts were good because they were built in C. But there was a lot of problems with like the transactions and overall ecosystem as a whole, which made us migrate and try different blockchains. I would like to say we tried every single blockchain under the rainbow, you know, Ethereum, Quarkchain, Quantum, you name it, we probably developed on it. But it wasn't until the 2018 uh, Hedera Hackathon that I actually truly got exposed to uh, developing on Hedera Hashgraph and learning from the team itself about you know the speed of the transactions, the consensus network that provides stability to the ecosystem. But most importantly, it allowed us to use um, the Solidity contracts that we already had and port them directly over to uh, Hedera Hashgraph. And that kind of like piqued my interest in developing on Hashgraph and the hackathon itself was the first time I actually got my hands wet with development. And I truly saw, you know, just with like the test net and like the proposed metrics that there was really an advantage to using a uh, hash graph, not just because of the speed, but because of the future features that were being offered, primarily uh, the consensus service is what piqued my attention. Awesome. I did say we'd, we'd come back to that. So as you know, consensus service is sort of a, an alternative to building a dApp, tapping into smart contracts on chain. So do you imagine that maybe a, a, a future uh, Armada architecture might move away from smart contracts? Well, yes. Yeah, so to me, the consensus service is the greatest new thing that a hitter offers. It can cause like, you know, this great paradigm shift on how we think about DLT development and technologies. And it is the exact thing that I was looking for for Armada that didn't exist yet. And so we built our existing architecture and system to kind of like pseudo create the consensus service, but it's definitely pretty heavy on smart contract as well as modifying the uh, micropayment service to kind of create a pseudo consensus service. But once the consensus service goes live, we'll be migrating the majority of our models like DLT uh, architecture over to it. Cool. Were you using the, uh, the memo field on a crypto transfer? Yes, we are using that to kind of create like pseudo topics and the pseudo messages. Cool. I confess. So Ken talked about that memo field and and the magic of it at Hedera 18. And I I had no idea what he was talking about at the time. (laughs) (laughs) I think I now understand. Yeah, it's very powerful. I think the idea of, you know, being able to, you know, group these topics, being able to, you know, query them, it's almost like you can run your own like mini nodes out there. Quite powerful technology. Yeah, you gain the trust of Hedera, but without the, the overhead of Hedera. Admittedly, it's a DLT. So by definition, it's going to be less efficient than doing something on a smaller set of nodes. So you're a hub. Can you take us through a a, a scenario by which two members of a supply chain interact via Amada? And when does Hedera get involved? Right. So just to kind of like, you know, paint the picture, let's look at um, a typical uh, maritime supply chain. And you have, you know, multiple shippers, um, you have your supplier and your end uh, destination. You know, each of these people have their own independent systems, whether it's SAP, maybe they use Flexport, or let's just say for the sake of it, a different blockchain track and trace solution. And then there's also parties on there that use plain email, and they refuse to use some supply chain management system as a whole, which is quite common in the industry. So every one of these people in their system, we offer a unique integration into their software that can push data into our hash graph. So this could be an integration working with Flexport, it goes straight into like the email information, straight into um, someone else's supply chain management software. And while their data is being submitted to the hash graph, we have it encrypted through our layer. And so you have all this supply chain data that's still like floating, that's now stored in Hedera Hashgraph that can be pulled by like relevant parties, which form what we call like partnerships on the Armada platform. So these different companies, they create what we call like a partnership activity, which identifies this is what we're shipping from origin to destination. These are the associated parties that are involved. We all know that we're interacting with each other. And then they can all see the data being pushed to Hashgraph and then pulling that data down, which incorporates back into their systems. We do provide like a visualization layer, also another layer for decentralized applications to build on top of it to offer, let's say, a trade finance app an analytics app for the data. But most importantly, we just provide a way for these companies to basically send data to each other in a secure and like auditable manner without having to share or moving on to someone else's system. 
Cool. I, I wasn't aware that you assume or at least allow for the possibility that somebody already has a, a blockchain-based supply chain system and they, they want to glue it together with somebody else. The industry as a whole, I think, is going to be moving towards collaboration. No, there's not going to be a single solution that's going to take over the whole industry. I mean, you rarely see that in any industry as a whole. But people are going to be so comfortable with their own workflows that they rather have a way that they can communicate with other people without disrupting, you know, what they core they do at heart, which I think is where collaboration, interoperability systems like Armada is going to be successful in the future. Cool. I was reading your, your website earlier and you were talking about authentication, I think, you know, in a different sense of a, than authentication of parties, but perhaps authentication of, of data. And you talk about pinpointing exactly when and what was done, which to me seems a perfect summary of, of what ledgers do, right? That's what Hedera does. We effectively allow business events, whatever they are, uh, shipping that tomato or something else to be pinpointed in time and order. Mm -hmm. No, exa exactly. I think that's why uh, the synergy between, you know, using Hedera technology uh, along with like the Armada was, you know, the exact reason why we decided to use Hedera Hashgraph. Awesome. Kent, what about roadmap? What's next for Armada? Right. So right now we're working on fixing proof of concepts that we have. We have a proof of concept in Hong Kong in the trade finance field right now, where trade finance company uses Armada amongst their clientele, and then they can see the shipment data and can fulfill their settlements faster, as well as have a greater confidence of data to act upon instead of receiving all of the data at the end. So it's kind of more of like a real time sense for them to see their clientele supply chain in action. Hopefully soon we'll have another proof of concept launching with a large supply chain corporation in Latin America that's more in the 3PL sector. So they'll be using it amongst their clientele to provide more. I, I don't like to use centralized because we're in the decentralized space, but uh, a more of a, a shared system for all their uh, clientele to um, work together on. Focused, I, I think, is the accepted term. Yes, I'll, I'll use that more in the future. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about settlement. Is there an expectation that in the future parties might settle through Hedera? I think in the future, if we will see people use Hedera as a settlement layer, whether it's HBAR, maybe a different stablecoin, I think that the uh, system itself provides a secure way as well as a quick and efficient manner to handle settlement transactions. Sounds good. Anything that drives traffic to Hedera is a good thing from, from our point of view. Kent, thank you very much. This It was great chatting with you. I, I look forward to seeing Armada develop. Maybe we'll meet in the future. Thanks again. Perfect. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for listening to Hedera Hashgraph's Gossip About Gossip. If you liked the episode, please subscribe, rate and review, and also share and tell your friends. Or connect with us on social media like Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Hashgraph. Particularly if you want to leave us feedback on the podcast. We look forward to hearing from you.